Hello, everybody out there. Happy Horror Friday. I'm Isabella Rachel. And I'm Richard Bergen. Today, we will talk about a Stranger Things for season. Created by the Duffer Brothers, a Stranger Things is a science fiction horror TV show. Set in the 80s, this TV show talks about the residents of the fictional town Hawkins, Indiana. Oh, yeah. And um, a lot of strange things happen in Hawkins, Indiana, as you could guess from the title. And it's very close to the alternate universe, the Upside Down. Oh, yeah. And tonight we have our guest. Patrick Boggs of the True Fiction Podcast. And Patrick, you're from Indiana, right? I live there right now. I'm probably in just Indiana. A, oh, wow. a few miles away from Hawkins, even oh, though it's cool. a mythical place. No, it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in their backyard. Yeah, they're right around here somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> and we went to Indiana a few months ago. We went to the Indiana Dunes yeah. near Chicago for a nice hike and i think you know that was that was a little bit you know much for isa that hike it was very you know i, I i'm into like walking like oh, an insane but it's amount beautiful. but it's yeah, beautiful it yes it's beautiful next time we'll drive for part of it <laughs> i've never been there i've heard great things i've heard it's, great it's things really I, need to, I need to go it beautiful oh yeah it is it is funny when you watch that show how it does remind me of the Midwest and actually the Midwest of that time. So, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I grew up in the modern day Midwest. So Patrick, tell us about what it was like living in Indiana in the eighties since you have firsthand stranger <laughs> things setting experience. <laughs> that, that's good. Okay. Old man, tell us about it. Well, here's the, here's the thing. <laughs> No, the, we yeah, we were saying before we started recording that we wish we had been around in the 70s oh, and 80s because yeah. it seems like such a cool era. And I think nowadays, you know, people are a little bit obsessed with, you know, recreating that time. And there have been a lot of movies that are made to show nostalgia for that era, like probably starting around like with Boogie Nights and that oh, yeah. era in the 90s. Point. Yeah. And that was uh, that was around when people started looking back to like the seventies and eighties. So we we would have liked to have seen it for ourselves. Sure. Well, you know, as uh, just like Isabella was saying before we started, she enjoyed um, the Dungeon and Dragons cartoon. I, I think all of us have uh, really fond memories of our childhood, no matter what years it was. Yeah, but that's they, true. But um, like. Will Byers' mother's house just was, I mean, I I didn't live in a house like that, but I knew a lot of people that did. There was lots of paneling, you know, uh, it wasn't all that really cool, slick things that we all think about a lot of times. Um, it was a lot of paneling, a lot of plaid. I mean, we always wore plaid. It was just, and you watch that show and his his stupid haircut in that show is, <laughs> is perfect. Oh it, it's God. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I had a buddy of mine that had a haircut just like that. I'm not kidding. Wow. So, yeah. Yes, I think we call it as a Delta in Brazil. I remember in the 90s, the kids wearing that The shoe. bowl cut. <laughs> the bowl cut, yeah. The, the mo, yeah. as we call it sometimes, you know, from the yeah. Three Stooges. <laughs> well, today I just learned the Portuguese word for bowl cut. <laughs> Say that again, Isabella. As a Delta. As I the think Delta? that's the name. As yeah, Delta. yeah. That's cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah, because I remember in the nineties, the kids they had. Oh, I remember that. The too. I saw so much better than bowl Delta's. cut. Yeah, as a Delta sounds more mysterious and exotic than right. bowl cut. Just sounds like yeah. your parents made you get a bowl cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh, now, yeah. when I was. When I was a little kid, girls had that haircut, and it was because of a uh, uh, an ice skater named Dorothy Hamill. I probably don't even remember her. She was in the 70s, and she had that haircut in the 70s. And so all the little girls got those haircuts. But um, 
But hey, we're not here to talk about Dorothy Hamill. We're here to talk about Stranger Things. So we'll go oh, back yeah. to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I I love the way it looked. I love the way that um, you know, here's another thing too. The 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 skies were dark. I mean, it looked I don't know if they used special filters or what, but they really captured a great feeling. You know, I think that's a lot of things with shows like that is that if they have to give you a feeling, you know, that it can't just be everything's bright and sunny. Cause that means something totally different. This is, we've seen a lot of dark stuff. Um, I love the effects when they were in the upside down where it was mirrored kind of water in black and that yeah, was it's like I love that. Really cool. it's snowy it's always like snowy yeah 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 you know, the set design for the upside down is really spectacular and then they did a great job uh doing the costume for vecna although i know he doesn't come up until yeah, later they build up so well until this last season and the last season was the darkest of all that's how i feel you know some people were like, oh, no, it was not as good. But I think it was. We like opinion. dark. Yes. Yeah, we're same here. Dark. Yeah, we're a very dark uh, trio here. Yep. You know, and I, I'm, I'm going to say, of course, I love the first season. Uh, and I know we're talking about that now, but I love the first season. It really got me going. I didn't know if I would like any more. I wasn't a fan of the second season, but then the third and fourth, were, I thought were dynamite. And I really think that the, I think they got really close to transcending their genre, which would have made it a little, I mean, I think more people than just horror or scary people, fans, they brought in a lot of fun characters and a lot of, and it was super, like you said, it was super dark. Mm -hmm. Like that, that cheerleader at the beginning. Oh man, yeah. that was rough. Yep. But that was the, the that was last that was the uh, season four. So yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, the first season I think they did very good. Like, you know, we didn't know what to expect. We we exactly. knew that something was wrong. Something you strange know? is going to happen. Yeah, that's that's yes, what the title gives we, away. Yeah, but we weren't <laughs> sure. What 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 is it? That's true. So yeah. We, they were build, building up to that, you know, and we know that she did a very good job. Oh, the yeah. Choice, the desperate mother. Yeah, I think it's a good him. comeback role for Winona. Yeah. Joe, and it's sad that, you know, she got a lot of attention for the shoplifting incident, and that might have hurt her career for a little while, but she's a really good actress, you know, and this is a great role for her. She looks very young too and stranger things yeah i think she's one of those people that just don't get old she she really yeah. does look yeah. and she looks i thought she looked fan and as, as i don't remember her name but as will byer's mom i thought joyce joyce that's right yeah. she was so it's perfect a, for that encyclopedic knowledge stranger yeah. things yes. <laughs> yeah yeah, that that she was. She, you're right. I agree 100 percent with what you said, and I think that actually. So I've seen other movies now with her in it, so it really did help ignite her career again, which I'm I'm happy for. Absolutely, no, she's a great actress, and that's you know it's a great dramatic role. It it, it gives her a lot of range, and you know I, you know I've known different you know actors, I've worked with different actors, and you never know what kind of role somebody would want you know some actors you know don't want to play a difficult character some actors you know don't want to have to you know be shown crying and and breaking down and and you know going through this traumatic and disturbing situation and other actors are like fuck yeah that's what i want you know this is this is acting and you yes. know I'm glad that you know she's embracing this role and you know playing it you know so well not holding back and yeah. everything that's good yeah i really like what i really like about stranger things is like it reminds me of america so much you know it's yeah. a pop culture that's what we were talking about 
and the way they show also the the 80s you know it's very nostalgic oh yeah yeah and it, it shows the american life you know how these families live it's super cool and that's something i've you know i've you know heard you know is telling me before when we weren't being recorded is that you know, growing up in, in Brazil and in Rio de Janeiro, you know, they show a lot of American movies and TV and play a lot of American music. Yeah. And so, you know, Issa, you know, grew up, you know, with, you know, this image of, you know, what is America like? Because if you're in a, if you're in a different country, you're going to get exposed to American stuff, whether you want to or not, yeah, because it's just it just gets played everywhere. Yeah, that's really good, you know. Yeah, and you can experience that, you know, through the movies. Oh yeah, and I also like the fact that they 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 mix, you know, it's like it's an alien, all these monsters, the different monsters, you know, it's it's very interesting. Oh yeah. Some good creatures in the upside down. They're bad, bad, good creatures. <laughs> yes. And also <laughs> the, you know, the Russian and you know, all these things in the lab. It's yes. it's like it's crazy. Imagine like maybe this is really happening. Like right Area now. 51. We don't know. Maybe there is a lab in some hidden city, you know. Oh yeah. They don't want you to know where it is. When they are passing <laughs> on, on people, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, you you yeah this I, i'm not i don't i know this is that kind of a talk or this kind of a, a show but you do wonder what our government isn't telling us about different things yes. you know yes. and oh, if yeah. you look in the past you look in the past you'll see a lot of conspiracies that were proven correct like so that's game. yeah uh to tuskegee uh when they gave all the uh the tuskegee men um venereal disease to test them out they then they they, they poisoned our water supply in a big city these are all things that actually happen yeah. Yeah. so when you see this stuff right when you see this stuff on like strange stranger things i think that's another thing too that makes it kind of kind of believable because you yeah you know that somebody's out there doing things you know uh i don't know what's and, and it doesn't matter this is this got too political but I don't know what side people, most people are, are split in half about what, how the vi or how the uh, virus came about, you know, oh, and they yeah. think it was uh, some, a lot of people believe that it was built in a lab yeah. and uh, there's a lot of things yeah. that point to that. So who knows? So when we yeah, see you things know like for sure, that's, and that's the problem is that, you know, there's always, you know, something out there that we don't, no, and I think, you know, Stranger Things definitely gets a lot of drama out of that, you know, curiosity about wondering what's out there, what's in the upside down, you know, and what, like, what is being hidden from us in, in the woods and in secret laboratories that we don't know about. Yeah. Yeah, probably a lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Aliens and being held captive. Yeah, we don't know. So that's like, that's another component, I think, for all the success, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. important component to be in the people's imaginary, you know. Oh, yeah. You're wondering, you know, Vecna might try to grab you when you go to the <laughs> toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they might be, uh, you know, testing something now, food, and we don't know about it. We never Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I like the FDA. That's probably my favorite government <laughs> bureau because I don't want my food to be contaminated. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just worry about who's over them. You know, that's, that's true. Hey, let's yeah, try this FDA leader. <laughs> no. And in this and in uh, Stranger Things, the first season, uh, Matthew Modine as that doc, as a doctor. Oh, he's he good. was he's so I mean, he's so smarmy i don't know he's he's got this thing where he's really kind of you really feel like he's a kind of he should be a bad guy but he almost feels like he does have a lot of love for 11 mm -hmm. and and there was so part of this i know that we talked we've talked about how uh american this is but the way he looked to me he looked like a manga character 
And some of the idea behind this, I felt like some of it felt manga ish with uh with the monsters and stuff like that and and uh oh, yeah, kids it's fighting kind of monsters. Like Godzilla a little bit back now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh yeah, there was um the I I watched some one of my favorite mangas was Genocyber and it's about these creatures that tear people in from limb almost like the uh what is that thing called where he, his face opens like a flower? Um the the D demigorgon that was oh, it. Yeah, the Demi yeah. <laughs> demigorgon. Yep. Is that right? I don't know. I could be wrong. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I know. Yeah, demagog. Yep. Oh yeah. And since yeah, for everybody who's listening to this, I just did like the hand gesture, like it's it's opening and snapping. Yeah, just, it reminds me of that movie. Uh, <laughs> The Guilherme, Guilherme del Toro. Oh, yeah. The Labyrinth. Pan's Labyrinth. Oh, Pan's Labyrinth. Yes. Yeah. Because they had yeah, that was the really good. Yeah. Had that, you know, and then there was the eye between the hands. Oh, the yeah. Man. That, yeah guy. that guy uh, was pretty yeah. freaky looking. Yeah. Uh, he was very pale and he had the tiny eyes and the claw hands with it would, hands. Uh, the eyes were in his hands, in the his palms of his hands. hands. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was in the hands. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. That was a very interesting movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was really yeah. good. Yep, that movie, yeah. And I, I was looking at a um, a document that talks about all the, you know, um, all the directors, like the 80s directors and different things where they pulled uh, influences in. And they were like Steven Spielberg, John Carpenter, David Lynch, uh, Wes Cravens. They even have uh, a kind of an H.P. Lovecraft thing going on too, with with the other side being this huge place that oh, remember the uh, huge creature that is um, you see him through the lightning and he's like over the. It might have. I thought he was in the first one. I think he was at the very end of the first one, but he he's kind of a big deal in the second one. I do believe. Yes, yes, I know. I know what you're talking about. And he was like, Will was feeling him, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. He, he, Will was kind of possessed by it because he wasn't upside down for a long time. And yeah, in the second season. And that, yeah, that creature like, got yeah, more influence. Feeling. And that's another theory that people have online that Will, he is another portal. Because he had all these feelings and he has been acting weird through all, you know, the seasons. And then people think that he is another a gateway, you know, to the upside down. So I don't so, know if you agree with that. They have questions about that. I do know from an, uh, on number four, there's a lot going on with Will that they don't go into. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that something's happening. And yes. I'm, I come back to one of the last scenes in <clears throat> the series one, where he, he basically spits up all these worms. Yes. You remember that? <laughs> and it's like, oh man, what's going on? And now, so this is a, something I don't really understand is, is Vecna was Vecna. Did Vecna cause, I mean, actually did, did 11, and Vecna fight, cause the Upside Down, and create the Upside Down? Yeah, that's what I was wondering, too. Because she, you know, she had all her powers, and she sent him there. And then that's created. I think he created the Upside Down. That's what I was wondering, too. Yeah, me, too. And then she feels guilty at a certain point in the last season because she thinks, oh, I, I've done all this. It's my fault. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's a lot to live with, you know, if, you know, feeling like I created this, you know, nightmarish yeah. underworld, but, you know, not intentionally. It's, it's so, it's so weird too, um, because I think a lot of people feel, I think another thing that makes us kind of uh, all look at this show and really, because we all feel a little out of place, you know, most times, right? Yeah. And I think that really plays, you know, when you, you can really, um, 
uh, you can related, really kind of relate yourself to the characters. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's exactly. one thing I was reading too that they chose the actors to play these young kids. All they pick it was like people that could be like you or me. You know, they have, they're not like super pretty. They're they not, they're unpopular just like normal, kids. Yeah. Normal, ordinary, young kids. And that's what we yeah. were just talking about in our last episode yeah. about Carrie, you know, being one of the unpopular kids at school and how that feels. So I think you could say Stranger Things was influenced a little bit by that, too, and that like kind of combining, you know, the high school or middle school drama with horror. Yeah. Well, there's an, another movie that's out now that that deals with a character that uh, doesn't feel quite exactly right in his life. I think it's called Fang. And, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you might have heard of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I, and I think that's, uh, I think we can all, you know, we all can, re like you said, Isabella, we can all relate to that. Mm -hmm. And that was something we said in our last episode, too, is that, you know, if you can identify more with the popular kids, you know, fuck them, you know. We don't. Yeah. We identify with the unpopular kids. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know what's, I think what's funny, too, is that um, you, you've heard of imposter syndrome. Oh, yeah. Where you just don't yeah. feel like you're, yeah. you're just kind of faking it. And I know that uh, I was reading something today that talked about how when you talk to somebody else, you feel like you're an imposter to them, but they're probably feeling the exact same way. That's true. And I think, I think there's the popular groups. There's people in those groups that feel like they're, you know, they, they're just faking it. They're just That's trying to get true. by. Oh, yeah. They're just pretending to be like somebody, like everybody else to get, you know, oh, yeah. to be there, to belong somewhere, probably. Oh, yeah. And I am kind yeah. of popular now, but I still feel like an outsider, even though I'm technically popular, which is kind of like, you know, that's that's hard to wrap <laughs> my head around. And I don't know. It's like, no, I don't accept that. I don't accept being popular. You know, when I, when I got, I, I wasn't super popular in high school. When I got out of high school, there were people that wouldn't talk to me in high school that two years out of high school, they would, they, they seen That's me cool. and they were like catching up and everything. And I, I felt like, oh, now you realize that you don't have a click anymore and you're on, and we're on our own little private islands. So you want to grasp at anything that looks familiar. And I was, I wasn't bitter about it. I was okay with that, but I just know that Everybody want you know after you know after high school you don't have that. I mean you can see that now. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this back around. You can see that in the later episodes of uh, of Stranger Things too. That that people um uh, they they start reaching out for other people. Even oh my gosh, with the redheaded girl's brother, which was I hated that what happened to Billy. him. But yeah, Billy. Yes, Billy. Yeah, I, you know, he did not want to be the kid that he was, you know? Yeah. He, so, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense, but. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, know, I know that feeling, sadly, you know, and especially when you're a teenager and you're going through these difficult, you know, changes and being in this difficult environment of high school. And then, you know, it's easy to feel like you want to be somebody else. Or you want to be Mr. Wonderful or Miss Wonderful and be like, you know, popular and straight A's and yeah. prom queen or prom king, all of that. Yeah. So what was your favorite what was your favorite part of this first season? Oh, let me think about what what was your favorite part? Well, it's always hard to pick favorites. It is. <laughs> well, what was yes, your favorite I, part, Patrick? When the monster is coming out of the wall. Oh, yeah, that's a really good scene. <laughs> it is, and she's there. She's trying to talk <laughs> to Will, you know. She turned on all the Christmas lights. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Yeah, it was really she, cool. It was like something is coming and it's the monster, actually. And then what you just got zapped by the telephone in the first episode, that was cool. And then she had to buy a new phone. Yeah. And she's like, give me this new phone and a pack of camels. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah and she's trying to figure out what happened and she never give up. You know, she knows he is not dead. You know. Yeah, that's well, we already talked about great she is, and that's those are great scenes with her yeah. in that house with setting oh, yeah. up those lights. That was fantastic. Yep. Oh yeah, that was really good stuff. You know, I like those things when they do things like that because uh, it it makes the audience feel bright, makes them feel like, oh, yeah. So they almost feel like they're figuring it out with her. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. No, it's great when you're, you know, and that's, you know, I think what every screenwriter hopes for is that, you know, your script is unpredictable and that, you know, people can't easily predict what's going to happen next because when you watch like a movie or a tv show that is easy to predict it's like here we go <laughs> right. yeah it's true yeah so they were able to keep the suspense like what's going on in the first season you know that, oh, that yeah. is what i like the most i like i like suspense too it's really good yeah yeah. I didn't feel like a lot of it was fluff either. I thought that most of it was meat, you know, the meat of the whole story. I like that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 There was no excessive drama because a lot of shows they do that. Yeah. yeah. We don't need like extraneous <laughs> bullshit. No. We... <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for today. Tune in next week for the thrilling conclusion of the Citizen Show's two part Stranger Things podcast. Like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, help us spread our creepiness to friends and family. Until next time. Bye, Sinners!